Let's consider this situation. Outside temperature over the course of a day can be modeled as a sinusoidal function. Suppose you know the high temperature of 84 degrees occurs at 6 p.m. and the average temperature for the day is 70 degrees. Find the temperature to the nearest degree at 7 a.m. For this problem, uh, what we would like to be able to do, first of all, is to come up with an equation and then we will try to evaluate it to figure out what that temperature is at 7 a.m. This problem is fairly similar to the last problem that we talked about. Notice that it's a sinusoidal function. Our temperatures are varying over the course of a day, so we can identify the period in our function uh, to be 24 hours. And keep in mind that when that we try to apply that in a formula, we're gonna have to figure out what the B value is. It's always two pi over your period, which in this case, we're gonna be having a pi over 12 modifier in my equation when I actually go to write it. Anytime that we're trying to write an equation, we also need to identify several other key important pieces of information. We need to identify the amplitude, the midline, and then figure out what our um, function base comparison type is. Are we using sine or cosine, positive or negative? Uh, make, make any of those identification purposes and any sorts of shifts that would be involved in that. Now, there's, there are some, in some ways, this is an easier problem than the last one. Notice that in this problem, what they do is they tell us that the average temperature for the day is 70 degrees. So if we're thinking in terms of a picture here, my average is 70, and it's going to be both higher and lower than that 70 degrees as we go through. The high temperature starts at 6 p.m. We are at the high temperature of 80 four degrees. So this is my high. 70 is my average, which means it's going to go from this high down to 70. Then it's going to go down below and come back up again and then come back up to 84 and then come back down like this. So in this case, because 70 is the average, that's that center line. And so that makes identifying the midline a little bit easier in this problem than it was in the last problem. Uh, the other piece of information that we need here in terms of uh, numerical adaptations to our formula is the amplitude. And the amplitude is the distance between the midline and the maximum or the minimum. So in this case, between 70 and 84, we can see there's a difference of 14. And we could figure out that the minimum temperature is here by then subtracting 14 on the low end, uh, which would be like, what, 56 or something on the bottom. Not really a piece of info we know, but you know, it's interesting. And so we have my temperatures bouncing back and forth between 56 and 84, centering out at zero or at 70 in the middle. And I have this situation here. Now at this point, I need to identify which sinusoidal function I wanna use. Do I wanna use sine? Do I wanna use cosine? And how are those things gonna work? Uh, keep in mind that if we kind of use the 6 p.m. as a starter value, notice that that's a maximum point. So it might be nice to use a positive cosine function because we're starting at a maximum value. At uh, this point, the other thing then that we need to decide is how we're going to deal with our shifts. In the last problem, it told us that T needed to be the number of hours since midnight. And we're not really restricted to that in this problem. But what is important is that you actually take the time to actually go and define what is what does T represent. Now, if you want to make your life easy, we can just say T is the number of hours since 6 p.m., And the nice thing about doing this is that this now becomes, if 6 p.m. is my starting value, and that's how t is defined, which we got to choose since the problem didn't tell us, um, this is now my zero, and I don't have any left and right shifts. So there's some advantages to that. So let's go ahead and, and work with this one here. t is going to be the number of hours since 6, 6 p.m. And so it's just going to be a positive cosine, no shift, and then we have the other pieces of of information that we need here in the problem. So at this point, what we can do is we can write an equation here that my temperature in degrees with my variable t, where t is the number of hours since 6 p.m., is going to be equal to the um, amplitude, which is 14, times the cosine of pi over 12 t um, plus my midline, so plus 70. And again, keep in mind, it's very important that T here is the number of hours since 6 p.m., which was a maximum value, which is what makes all of this stuff work out. Now, in this problem, 
I have come up with an equation, which the problem didn't tell me to do, but I needed to find. What the question did ask me to find then is it said, find the temperature to the nearest degree at 7 a.m. So at this point, what I'd like to do is I need to evaluate this function for the value of t. Now keep in mind that t is the number of hours since 6 p.m. and what I'm interested in is 7 a.m. So from 6 p.m. till midnight I have 6 hours and then from midnight to 7 a.m. I have 7 more hours. So in terms of my problem what I'm looking at is what is going on at t equals 13. 13 hours after 6 p.m. gives me the 7 a.m. that I'm interested in. So to solve the equation what I want to do then is just find what is 14 times the cosine of pi over 12 times 13 plus 70. Now this is, there's no variables in here. Uh, we just need to go into our equation or into our calculator and evaluate this equation. Keep in mind that everything is created here. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything that's created here is all based on using radians. And so make sure your calculator is in radians mode when you go in. But we essentially just want to type this in exactly the way we see it. 14 cosine of pi over 12 times 13 plus 70. So over here, 14 times the cosine of pi over 12 times 13 hours. Close the parentheses there is really important. And then plus 70, which was my midline. And when we hit enter, what we end up with is 56.48. Um, or we can just call it 56.5 degrees. Oops, where are we? There we go. 56.5 degrees. Now, if you kind of look over here at my, um, at my calculations or at my picture, notice that we're bouncing back and forth between a high of 84 and a low of 56. So we're just coming up from that low dip. And that should make sense after, if we're starting at 6 p.m. at a high, it's going to, if it's, if we're going sinusoidally over the course of a day, 12 hours later, we'd be at our low point. So at 6 a.m., I'm at the lowest temperature and then I'm starting to move my way back up. So by 7, by 7 a.m., I've eked up to 56.5 degrees. So that sounds fairly reasonable for my picture and my other situation. And again, it's always a really good idea to see does that answer that I came up with sound reasonable um, within the context of my problem and within uh, what my equation is set up to tell me. And so that all sounds fairly reasonable and that gives me the answer to the question that I'm after. This is the type of work I'd like to see for your problems as you're setting them up to solve on the 6.5 assignments. Hope that helped.